Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 85 in the series of viewers games. This one is from Eric from the USA and Eric has sent in a rapid game played on the chess.com website. Eric's rating there is 1393 and his opponent Lady of Pain has a rating of 1357. Eric said that he no longer plays Blitz and has moved to Rapid and I must say that is a very good idea. Playing Rapid gives you more time to think about your moves and if you analyze the game afterward you learn more from it. Let's have a look at the game. Eric is white and he opens with d4. The time control is 15 minutes and 10 seconds increment per move. d6 from Lady of Pain. Sometimes players play d6 to come with a quick e5. So knight f3 from Eric stops that e5 idea for the moment. Knight f6, c3 and here knight b to d7 has been played in a number of Grandmaster games. But black decides to play the knight to a6 instead. Bishop f4, c5 and e3, a very solid setup from Eric. The dark squared bishop outside of the pawn chain and setting up a pawn formation that's extremely robust and flexible. e6 and now Eric makes a big decision. He decides to take the knight to shatter black's pawn structure and then he took on c5. Now what is more logical than taking back that pawn, d takes c5, maybe Lady of Pain was worried about losing the right to castle after queen takes, king takes. But that was better than what Lady of Pain played. She did not take back, she played d5. And that's just a healthy extra pawn for white. c6 was played immediately, this pawn is now crippling the bishop on c8. It cannot be developed that way and it's hard to see where that bishop will ever be entering the game. Queen a5 from black, knight bd2 developing and queen b5 attacking two unprotected pawns. Black is trying to get her material back this way. Knight d4 protecting the c6 pawn and black took on b2. Eric castled. And that is a very good move, especially for a player of with a rating of 1393. This is very good. Not holding on to the C-pawn, which is attacked, but finishing his development. Bravo, Eric. Black took the pawn. Rook b1. Bishop c5 developing. And knight 2 to f3. Black decides to take on d4. Knight takes and play knight e4. Setting up a nice fork on d2, forking both rooks. And the queen cannot take the knight because it's protected by the black queen on c3. Very nice, but Lady of Pain had not looked any further. She saw the knight fork and went for it. Neglecting here her development and neglecting white's counter chances. And there comes Eric. c7, very strong move. Knight d2. Going for that fork, black sees a fork and plays it without looking any further. Both rooks are now hanging. But Eric had looked further, he was not afraid of the fork. He played rook b8, very strong move, that was the idea be behind pushing that pawn to c7. You cannot take the rook because then white gets a new queen, an extra queen. So what to do after rook b8? The rook in a corner is lost. Knight takes f1. You have to take that material there. Rook takes a8. And now the bishop is hanging. So Lady of Pain castled, protecting the bishop with the rook. Queen takes f1. White has now an extra piece. A protected passed pawn on c7. And a safe king. Life is good for white. The game continues. Rook e8. Rook b8. And e8 e5 that was the idea of rook e8 forking two pieces does black win material back no again lady of pain had not looked any further because white can just take the pawn here eric didn't see it but you can do that because after rook takes e5 winning that piece there is a mate in two rook takes you can only interpose the rook and this is checkmate eric did not see it but played something else. He gave material back after e5. He took on c8. 
rook takes and now took on e5. So black has won some material back. White has now bishop and knight for the rook, but still that monstrous pawn on c7, which makes that this position is still completely winning for white. Queen a3, queen b1, protecting the a pawn, h6, making some air for the king, and here a strange move from Eric. He also makes some air for his king, but g4 is not the most logical move. h3 is more solid, more safe, and doesn't give black any counter chances. But g4 was played. Queen e7 and queen b7. Very nice again from Eric as a reaction to the attack on his bishop. This, the queen is attacking the bishop. White counterattacks the rook. The knee-jerk reaction is to protect the bishop or play the bishop to a safe square, but Eric looks further. Very well done. Queen d7, protecting the rook, and also attacking the g4 pawn. So h3 is a very safe move, but Eric takes on a7. He's not worried about queen takes g4. Black played it. It looks a bit dangerous, with white's queen far away, but Eric doesn't see any ghosts. There are enough defenders around white's king to avoid a perpetual check that black is trying to set up. King f1, queen d1 check, king g2, queen g4 check, and now Eric interposes the bishop. Queen e4 check, one more check, and the knight comes back to shield the check, and white's king is perfectly safe. h5 h4 and f5 black is throwing everything but the kitchen sink at white a good strategy in a lost position eric has nerves of steel he just takes on a6 attacking the rook so black has to switch back to defense and queen e8 is the only way to protect the rook a4 another pass pawn from eric makes its way up the board rook a8 Queen b5, offering a trade of queens, and queen f7. Queen b8 check, queen f8 interposing, and queen back to b5. And this was the last move of the game, a very odd finish. Repeating the moves, maybe black lost on time here. Anyway, white is still totally winning. If black goes for a move repetition, then many moves win for white. Knight g5 is the move that the computer likes most, and... The computer gives a mate in 13 from here, but another way is just to push the A-pawn. That also wins easily for white. Nice game from Eric. Thank you very much, Eric, for sending it to me so I could share it with a chest to impress community. And well played. Hope you enjoyed Eric's game. If you would like your own game to be analyzed, you can send it to me by email to classroomchess64 at gmail.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. If you like the video, if you like this series, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.